Okay, good evening everyone. Again, we are broadcasting live here using the Second Life platform. We are also broadcasting live audio to our server, which will be recorded there. And hopefully also recording a video version of all of our avatars sitting in Second Life with audio to be put on YouTube. So apologize for missing last night. I found out about a a program seminar workshop on suicide suicide alertness suicide alertness training it's called safe talk suicide alertness for everyone You might wonder why a, a Buddhist monk and meditation teacher would need to go to such training. I suppose I didn't really, but I'd like to talk about it a little bit. And then we can use that to talk about suicide. Do you know that I think in Canada anyway, 1 in 20 people... One in 20 people statistically have thought about suicide in the past year, seriously thought about suicide. It's a big deal. University students, apparently it jumps up to 9%, which is almost 1 in 10. Almost 1 in 10 university students have thought of suicide seriously in the past year. One of my classmates tried to kill herself recently. It's a big deal. And so the the you know the interesting information that came out of the um, workshop or the seminar, whatever it was, is that it's um, it's more common than you think. And a lot of the signs, that's a big part of the training, is to recognize signs. A lot of the signs that we often dismiss as you know, ordinary depression, or, or we dismiss for what they are really, like, oh, that person's just depressed, you know? Without thinking about the the level of of desperation that those feelings bring depression stress self hatred yeah, everyone around us looks like they're coping pretty well right we're the ones that have problems and that's that's the biggest i think you know, just speaking from a buddhist point of view that's the biggest inhib inhibitor to uh, being of use to others is having your own problems. It's a sort of a defense uh, for meditation, for the, the, the intense focus on meditation practice. Focusing on meditation makes you a better person. It helps you clear out all the junk you have. So anyone who talks about compassion or even love friendliness if they avoid self-development you know, the idea of developing wholesome thoughts clearing out your own stresses and worries and depression and so on then uh, it's never going to be natural it's never going to be powerful it's always going to be affected. 
And so to be able to actually empathize and recognize and and uh, sense when someone is really going through a hard time is it's um well it requires this self purity or requires you to be strong yourself. Anyway, so we went through this training and learned some interesting an interesting framework. You know, you look for signs. Then you actually ask, and you ask directly, are you thinking of suicide? You know, people who have these sorts of symptoms often are considering suicide. Are, are you considering suicide? It's important to be direct, they say, which is, you know, it's all interesting filtering this through a Buddhist lens, right? Being direct. I don't think there's anything, I think that, fits quite nicely with Buddhism don't beat around the bush talk straight the point being that serious issues serious matters you know, they're not the kind of thing that can be easily divulged by beating around the bush sometimes it's important to call a spade a spade I'm all about that getting myself in trouble talking about things I maybe shouldn't but being forthright about how I feel and what I think and what the situation seems like to me I think there's benefit to that definitely and then you listen and, and try and get a sense of whether this person is you know you ask questions and listen to them talk and you know are they serious how are they where are they at? And then you connect them with someone who can keep them safe. Um, so it, it it's just this kind of thing is a nice experience and it made me think of two things. First, that having good intentions and actually being able to do good deeds are two very different things, two fairly different things. It's interesting. In Buddhism, I think we only focus strongly on goodness. That's so I talked about that last time. Being a good person, let's say, to, to sort of put it mildly. Purifying one's intentions. Having good intentions. But the ability to actually help someone, it's not that important. And we don't focus too much on it. And I think that's valid and 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 it's okay because doing good doing good deeds is often very much about the details it's very much about these sorts of seminars and learning sort of uh skills right not every arahant not every enlightened person is going to be able to help others it's not really the point the point is really to help yourself to purify your own mind and you could argue that, of course, a, a person who is pure, like an arahant, is, of course, going to be help others, be able to help others. But they still have to learn you, to give gifts. You have to have a sense of um, proper time, and you have to have a sense of how to approach someone. And what I mean to say is, there's many sort of uh, practical concerns in terms of doing good deed to keep more moral precepts um, you have to learn about them of course an enlightened being is going to have natural purity so there's nothing wrong but you know to learn the monastic precepts it's not something that you get automatically being a, an arahant an arahant can still break some of the precepts uh, some even some precepts which are actually kind of important for communal harmony an arahant could touch money an arahant could um, eat afternoon breaking monastic precepts there's much that society I think can teach us even as Buddhists 
not so much about um, the, the most important things, purifying one's mind, the practice of meditation. I don't think there's much philosophy or spirituality that can be taught. It may sound somewhat arrogant, but I honestly, if you study Buddhism enough, you kind of get a sense that it's fairly complete in that in that regard. But, uh, you know, in regards to solving life's problems, in regards to practically um, fitting Buddhism, fitting the most incredible teachings of Buddhism into society. And so that's sort of the second thing that I thought about this, this seminar is being able to be in a room with other people and, and interact with other people who are also interested in helping others and in doing good things and interested in, in mental health. And so it feels like this is about setting Buddhism into Canadian society. I suppose the third thing is is getting recognized and um, fitting in, I suppose. Because the great thing about religion is that it um, it creates a great amount of conviction and and effort, you know. When people have this religious zeal, it can be so powerful. So powerful people will do in crazy things that they never would. Awful things, but also wonderful things. And so for meditation, it's quite useful to meditate in a religious context because then you're willing to give your life up for it. And you're willing to go to great extremes. Mainly means like being able to deal with great amounts of pain, um, without doing without sleep, without food, you know, doing without entertainment. Sometimes it requires that religious zeal. But the problem is, religion is is somewhat um, contentious, right? Hard to get Christians to come to meditate. Hard to get Muslims sometimes to come and meditate. Not so hard to get Jews to come and meditate, for the most part, because the Judaism's kind of weird that way. Um, and and sometimes hard to get, often hard to get secular people to come and meditate. Uh, they wouldn't take it seriously. There's so many. There's so much. You know. There's so much of what we're doing. Other groups in society are trying to do. Psychologists, therapists, and their support groups on campus. Everyone's trying, you know, there's so much. And so first of all, connecting with these people is just a wonderful thing. I've started to realize, I guess it's something I've always thought is, don't help ordinary people so much. I mean, don't focus your efforts on the people who are going to class and who, who don't have any, who aren't thinking about mental health. Focus on the people who want to help other people because they're the best people for you know, meditation so connecting with these people is just uh, you know, just in and of itself is great and and presenting oneself you know i am the only i'm the only ordained clergy on campus of any denomination or any religion i think i get a lot of stares but now it's great and now i get uh, in the past week, I've noticed especially, I get so many smiles now. I suppose maybe I'm I'm missing a lot by you know, walking mindfully with my gaze down. But whenever I look up to try and avoid people, they're often smiling at me. And I don't know whether it's because I know them. It seems like often it's just because getting a good reputation, you know, fitting in easing people's minds that, no, I'm not a Hare Krishna, I'm not here to sell you books. Uh, no, I'm not some freak weirdo streaker guy. Helping people understand that you know, Buddhism is is only a religion in the nominal sense of being something that to be taken seriously, something that has profound consequences. It has nothing to do with beliefs or dogmas or 
constraints or so on. It's it's very much about self help, right? Self help to the nth degree. It's the greatest form of self help. So it's great to be um, somehow integrating with modern society. Of course, with the with the uh, qualification that most we most of Western society is not all that interested. Most of any society, I suppose. Um, but there are a lot of problems, a lot of drug addiction and you know, medication addiction, a lot of alcohol abuse, a lot of stress, a lot of narcissistic no i don't self self obsessed self absorbed entertainment instant gratification that kind of thing but still or even you know more all the more reason to stick with those people cuz there's so many good people as well i te do teach quite a few or i have taught quite a few people who seem to be muslim just by wearing the this headscarf which is interesting, mostly women. So anyway, um, makes us think about the topic of suicide, which is an interesting Buddhist topic. There's a lot of of debate, I suppose, uh, among monastics whether the Buddha actually condoned suicide because he didn't seem to rule out the it, it it appears in some cases, and I've heard people say that the Buddha wasn't clearly against suicide. In fact, my many many years ago, my Indian religions professor said that uh, Buddhism is unclear. She didn't really like Buddhism, I don't think. She said Buddhism is waffles on the topic of suicide. I don't think that's the case, actually. I think we have a fairly clear monastic um, doctrine or do. Uh, uh, we have a rule against it. If you try to kill yourself, you're breaking a rule. It's pretty clear it's it's not kosher. But there are cases where monks tried to commit suicide, and the Buddha was, as I think he generally is, fairly non-committal, and even seemed to suggest that, well, left open the, or no, not left open, he pointed out that, um, you know, if you believe what, we read in this in the text pointed out that there was at least one case where someone committed suicide and as they were dying became an arahant so it, it isn't a cut and dry issue <coughs> suicide is just another act and we do it for various we attempt it for various reasons we do it for various reasons we succeed sometimes we're we lose lose courage sometimes and and but it's one of those one of those choices you know? it's one of the escapes even meditators have these i don't know how many meditators actually consider suicide probably not well not in i i don't think of all the meditators i've ever taught that there have been too many, but um, you know, as a meditator, you 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 go through this and you experience this aspect of the mind that wants to run away. You become quite familiar with this part of the mind that becomes desperate because meditation is is tough and it forces you to look at things you'd rather not look until finally the mind becomes desperate and starts to think of all sorts of ways it might escape. And of course, suicide might be one of them. I don't think so. I don't think it would be that common. I know that I've heard of meditators trying to kill themselves, killing themselves. We have even a curious example in the suttas of a bunch of monks who hired someone to kill them or, or, or convinced some lay person, I think, to kill them or something like that. Because they were so disgusted. Anyway, there's context there. They They had very, very bad karma and it led them to... 
uh, wrongly think that they could escape suffering by killing themselves. Something like that. But um, I mean, for for I guess committed Buddhists, suicide I don't think should be that much of a problem because it's quite clear that it's not the answer. It, it only it only works if you if you're a nihilist if you believe that after death there's nothing. Jedawad. You believe that this is it when we die there's nothing. Well, then then it makes sense. In fact, it does make sense. If you believe that when you die there's nothing, well, yeah. If 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 life if life is awful, then absolutely it's it's the answer, right? Okay, you could argue that it might get better, but it might not. It very well might not. And so now we have laws being passed to allow people to commit suicide if they're termini terminally ill. I think in Canada it's now been legalized. If you want to die, go ahead. I think Buddhism in general is fairly permissive. If someone decides to kill themselves, uh, we're not going to make laws against it in a Buddhist society, ideally, I don't think. Maybe. Maybe you could argue there's it's discouraging and therefore it's a good thing, but Buddhism is much more about um, giving people the autonomy to make their own choices. It's not so prescriptive as it is... Um, Instructive And so the real point is You're not going to solve anything by killing yourself I mean It's not quite as drastic I suppose Because you'll just come back again But If you if you kill yourself then you die In, 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 in a desperate situation You die with a mind state That is um, Overwhelmingly negative and so the idea that it's going to help mm, not terribly well informed from a Buddhist point of view so uh, I think I've talked about this before but it is important to kill yourself it's important for everyone we should all kill ourselves then we would never have to commit suicide you see, Buddhism, of course, looks at it quite differently. That killing the self has nothing to do with the body. It's nothing to do with the death of the body. The death of the body is a concept. It's called uh, samuti marana. Samati, maybe I, samuti, I don't know. My teacher calls it samuti marana. Uh, kanika marana is the real one. We die every moment. We're born and die, born and die every time We see, hear, smell, taste, feel or think And if you see that Then you kill yourself Then it's, it's death of the self Because the self is not a part of that you know, If you start looking at the world From the point of view of what's really going on now Here and now, our experience You have no need for suicide. You have no self. No sense of I. Just a sense of experience. It's not a philosophical question, is there a self, isn't there a self? It's a question of what you see, what is, what is experienced. Kill yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely important, most important step in Buddhism Death of the self When the concept, because it doesn't actually exist So the concept of self, when the concept of self dies The conceiving of self dies You never have need for any escape There's nothing to escape These experiences are not me, are not mine That's what we aim for Buddhism is a lot like polishing a lens. I think there's some imagery about polishing a lens. If a lens covered over in dirt, you slowly polish it. What we're doing in Buddhism is 
clearing our vision. Cultivating clarity of mind, clarity of vision, allowing us to see reality more and more clearly as we go. When we look at the four foundations of mindfulness, we look at we see the body as the body, our stomach rising and falling. We're sitting, we're standing, we're walking, we're lying down. I see the feelings as feelings. We lose our sense of self. Slowly, slowly we start to see this is pain is just pain. It's not me, it's not mine. We begin to appreciate or become familiar with the nature of experience which is the underlying foundation for reality and we see it just as experience we see these experiences there's no soul here there's no self here there's no control here this sense of control is just a, a just an illusion you start to see how habits form and the habits take charge they have a power to them and so slowly, slowly you starve the self until it dies and uh, dies a final death and then that's called samuchida marana death by cutting off defilement Realize Sabe Dhamma Nalang Abhiniwesaya. No Dhamma is worth clinging to. So, some thoughts on suicide. And the first thought is it's a sort of helping people with suicide is a, it's a sort of a goodness. I think not so much because of the suicide thing. But because of the what is leading to it, you know, if someone's considering suicide, that's you know, that's the sort of uh, well, there's a need. That's a, a not great opportunity to to do something to help someone, right? Help the people in greatest need. And it's not that difficult, really, if you're mindful, if your mind is present, and if you have these skills and, and sort of um, perspectives. So I think it's a two-part, as with any goodness. I think this shows us, or it showed me that there are two aspects to goodness. There's the, the good quality of mind, but there's also the skillfulness, the ability to speak and to act in ways that help others which is more practical and, and more sort of the technicalities of performing goodness which I think we can all learn and we can learn from non-Buddhist sources I do believe that when we learn from society we watch other people how soup kitchens work and we learn how to how soup kitchens work and we apply our goodness so we'd be a good person working in a soup kitchen the good person part is the buddhist part the working in a soup kitchen well we have to go to a soup kitchen to learn i think learning how to help people with suicide i think you could argue that these sorts of seminars are good frameworks how to what to say how to act sort of how to work with the system to direct them to someone who's um, you know, been trained and and whose role, whose job is to help people with suicide, and we direct them onto them. I think that's good food for thought as Buddhists for us to think about ways that we can connect our Buddhist practice to the goodness around us connect with other organizations, non-Buddhist organizations that are doing good things 
I'm working with a lot of different groups on campus, working with the Peace Studies Society. There's a new group, I just talked to one of them this evening, MAC Alliance for Body Peace, and they're very much about people being coming comfortable with their bodies. You know, some people are overweight or people who feel they're not beautiful enough, that kind of thing. But they have the word peace in their title, so I got in touch with them. And uh, they're very happy to work with us. We've become good friends now. And so they're going to help. I don't know if I mentioned to anyone on the internet, we're planning to do a free hugs session. Now I know hugs, perhaps from a Buddhist point of view, are a little bit, you can be a little bit skeptical because it could be an attachment to the feeling of being hugged. But it's much more... A hug is, a, is much more about a connection and a sense of I see you, I recognize you, I appreciate you, which is very much, you know, metta and karuna and mudita. So I don't think it's, I think a hug is, is I mean, I won't be doing the hugging personally, but I'm, I'm happy to work with these things. It, I think it brings people to think more about peace, more about harmony, more about working together, more about caring for each other the kind of thing we can use in the world these days I think um, I think this is important for us to I guess circle the wagons if you know what that means where we don't worry so much about the outside world I had a we had a little discussion on Wednesday about this um, about not putting your energy into conflict what if I meant I talked about this online that, uh, yeah, I think I did talk about this already. Sorry, it's been a long week. I'm also working on a, a research proposal. I posted some of it online. Maybe some of you saw that. So I'm going to be working on that for the next week. Lots of good things. But yeah, circling the wagons, um, working with people, finding the good people in the world not necessarily Buddhists I mean it's great that we have all of us practicing here and for me I, I'm i always surrounded by people practicing meditation but I think uh, if you're going to connect with people in the world don't just go finding people who, don't just go Interacting with society at large Find the people who are interested in good things Find these organizations Work with them Don't waste your energy trying to change systems that are Inherently corrupt Or to change people's views when they're Already on a bad path Focus your energies on the good people On the people who are Intent upon good And work together Because it, it wears off It it, uh, it, what, it Rubs off on people It it, uh, it has an effect on the rest of society when you work together with like-minded people to perform services to society and to spread information and to give reminders of peace. So what we're going to try to do with this other group is we're going to set up outside of the exam rooms on exam days, right? Like a half an hour before exams or an hour before exams will set up an hour before exams, I suppose, was set up and uh, they'll give out free hugs and kisses, but the kisses is Hershey's kisses because chocolate is, I mean, I think chocolate could be argued to be a, that's a good token, a token gift. And I might set up a five minute meditation stand you want to learn how to meditate before going into your exam? I think this is perhaps uh, it's 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 a greater extension to, to to ask the question whether someone can learn how to meditate right before they they do an exam and actually have it benefit them. It might be a little bit 
um, debasing to the meditation practice in general. You might argue that. But I think even just sitting down there, being the, like kind of like a chaplain, you know, being there for people who are are uh, ready to go into their exam and helping them take a few moments to breathe, right? There's nothing wrong with that. So this is maybe what we're going to do. Which I want, you know, I'm I'm talking about this as a as a means of. Cultivating, helping us to think about the right things. The Dhamma is about focusing our minds in the right direction. And these are examples of ways I think in society we can, living, living in society, we can still focus our minds in good ways. We don't have to leave society. As many of us are not able to leave society. Those of us who have jobs, children, marriages, debt, all sorts of things keep us in society but there are still ways we can live our lives peaceful live simply do good cultivate purity of mind that support our meditation practice that support our own practice and our own path towards Enlightenment. So, there you go. There's the Dhamma for tonight. A little bit about suicide on different levels. And, right, so the other, just to sum up, the other aspect of the idea of suicide is that yes, you should kill yourself, but no, you shouldn't commit suicide. Suicide is not killing yourself. It's like those, uh, if you ever saw that picture of the Dalai Lama, it's a meme, the Dalai Lama got memefied, and it says, and then she said, you only live once, and he's laughing. So it's, this is what we have to say for those who commit suicide. Yeah, nice try. Doesn't really work that way. So on the other hand, if it's not such a serious thing, if someone commits suicide, well, hopefully they'll know better next time. I think um, death is is uh, is actually worse for non-Buddhists, right? It's more scary. People say, well, Buddhists are, are obsessed with death and all these suffering and so on, but these things don't have the same... They don't have the same... Uh, Intensity. I mean, I remember taking religion and in, in uh, Buddhists, Buddhism in India, a class on Buddhism in India, and my Catholic f classmate friend came up to me afterwards after one of the classes, and she said, "I mean, it's just so liberating, this idea that you might have another chance, right?" Um, I think that could be dangerous. If people sort of misunderstand it And it could lead to actually people To be more likely to commit suicide Thinking I'll start over Right I wouldn't say there's nothing to that I would say yes you could You could kill yourself and start over That's one way of looking at it I don't think it's a very smart Or, or um, uh, Recommended I mean the, 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 there's glaring problems with that And, and I think it's it makes it fairly stupid, fairly uninformed and, and unadvisable to do because you're dealing with karma right now. You know, the problems that you have right now are are a result of of your you know, your path. They're where you are. Killing yourself doesn't suddenly transport you to a better state. It compounds your aversion to suffering, it compounds and augments and affirms your inability to cultivate wholesome mind states you know you kill yourself you're 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 not actually doing anything positive the point is it doesn't take you out of a bad situation if that's where you are right now why do you think killing yourself is going to suddenly make things better and in that sense buddhism is very much about 
reveling in a sense, almost reveling in in suffering as a means for greater self-development. You know, suffering now is just wonderful because I can learn, because I can study, and because I can challenge myself and in the future never have to suffer again. When things are good, it's somewhat scary, I suppose. When things are good, it's very easy to become negligent. When things are pleasant, when life is pleasant, that's a little more scary as a Buddhist. <laughs> it must sound awful, I suppose. But it's all in the name of peace, because happiness doesn't lead to happiness, and suffering doesn't lead to suffering. I suppose that seems somewhat counterintuitive, but it's true. Just because you're suffering now doesn't mean, oh, this suffering, I better get rid of it, or I'm going to suffer more. It's not really like that. And the happiness is the same. Cling to happiness it doesn't lead to more happiness. And so killing yourself is not not actually in any way beneficial not even from a Buddhist perspective. and I, I don't think that's completely obvious, and I think a superficial reading of Buddhism could actually encourage people to kill themselves. You know, any, any, any religion that teaches an afterlife, they have to make strict reminders, like in Christianity, no, no, if you kill yourself, you're going to go to hell. They need that doctrine. I don't even know if it's in the Bible or not, but Um, there's a general sense that if you kill yourself you go to hell which is important because if you could believe in Jesus and kill yourself yeah, it wouldn't be so good you'd have a lot of Christians killing themselves potentially, I'm not sure I'm, I'm sure they've, there's much written on the topic of Christians and suicide but yes, uh, in Buddhism it's about kill the self killing the self understanding what is the self that this body is not self It's not something you can kill Killing the body doesn't kill the self The self is a concept It's to be killed through seeing things clearly as they are Because there's nothing about reality that indicates self It's all an illusion Reality is experiences when you break that apart, you can free yourself. Free yourself from mental slavery. All right, there you go. That's the talk for tonight. If there are any questions, I'm happy to stick around for a while. Or uh, if you see any questions on the meditation site, someone want to paste them in here, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, I'm going to go... Samucheda Marana, does it refer to the moment of enlightenment or parinibbana? I don't know, you could refer to either. Could refer to seeing nibbana, could be referred to simply parinibbana. Parinibbana is the ultimate cutting off, but. I think it more refers to the death of defilements. So it would be the experience of Nibbana at, at each level. Well, thank you, Simon. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear this is useful stuff. All right. Well, have a good have a good night, everyone. And I should be back tomorrow, if I'm not dead by then. And hopefully, you all will be back if you're not dead by then. But even if we do die, we'll all we'll still come back. All right. Have a good night. How do we stop this?